today. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you. The next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Sandra White. Thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions it's had with the UK Government about the welfare of people held at the Ngevo Detention Centre in light of recent protests held there. Minister Margaret Burgess. The operation of the Invego Immigration Removal Centre is reserved and it's the responsibility of the Home Office. However, following reports of a hunger strike at Dinvego, the Cabinet Secretary for Social Justice, Communities and Pensioners' Rights wrote to the Home Secretary on the 26th of March 2015 to raise his concerns about the situation and a range of other issues, including indefinite detention, living conditions at Dinvego and the level of contact with immigration casework. A response was received from a Home Office official as it was during the pre-election period and this was not satisfactory as it didn't address the points raised and therefore the Cabinet Secretary wrote again to the Home Secretary on the 28th of May to urge her to reconsider the issues. A response to that letter has not yet been received and the Cabinet Secretary will advise the Member and other interested parties when the response is received and will pursue the matter further if necessary. Sandra White. Uh, thank the Minister very much for that reply. Very interesting. Uh, the Minister will also be aware that the SQC, political and religious leaders, also asked to meet with detainees. In fact, wrote uh, to Dingaval as well. And although the manager was willing to facilitate this, the request was refused by the Home Office, uh, causing great concern, as you have uh, raised in, in your answer, uh, Minister. Can I ask, therefore, when you are looking at the reply when it comes, or will you raise the issue of the fact that uh, these groups cannot gain access to the detainees in Dingaval and pressurise the Home Office or whoever officer is uh, available there uh, to ensure that these individuals do gain access to the detainees in Dingaval? Minister. Yes. I, mean, I very much agree with the member. Uh, the Scottish Government would very much support that these groups uh, getting access to the facilities uh, at Dinbagel and talking to those detained there. It was actually one of the issues that um, the Cabinet Secretary raised on his letter. He did uh, point out that the, the delegation had asked permission to uh, meet the detainees. Um, and he, he said, I urge you to grant permission for this visit. Um, on the, the letter he received back from the, official, uh, the Home Office official, um, permission, as the member rightly says, was refused and said that under normal circumstances, access to immigration removal is limited to organisations ex exercising statutory duties, social and legal visitors and other visitor groups. That is not satisfactory. And the Cabinet Secretary, uh, on the letter on the 28th of May, has again urged the, the Home Secretary to reconsider her decision and allow permission to these groups to enter Dumbago. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, President Officer. That's very encouraging, Minister. And when you talk about statutory duties, uh, any groups, religious or otherwise, going to look at the welfare or look after the welfare of detainees is surely, in my mind, a statutory duty. So I, I look forward uh, to that answer. Uh, also, Minister, could I ask you, you'll probably be aware that the UK is the only country in the EU which detains people indefinitely. Uh, would you, therefore, or your department, therefore, support recommendations uh, of the all-party group on refugees and migration that uh, there is a time limit of 20 days that anyone can be held in detention and would you also agree with the 500 people who demonstrated on Saturday, myself included, that uh, Dungaval is no fit place to detain anyone? Minister. Okay. I, I very much uh, agree with, with Sandra White that Dungaval is not a, a fit place to, to detain anyone uh, and also support the, the 500 people who uh, held the, the demonstration on Saturday and I long appreciate it's been something that Sandra White has long uh, campaigned against uh, in Bagel. So, But the government is deeply concerned about the indefinite um, length of time that people can be detained there. We do absolutely understand that this causes anxiety, uh, stress, fear and health issues um, for people who are simply exercising the right to seek a place of safety where they're free from persecution. The Scottish Government does support the, rec the recent recommendation of the all-party parliamentary groups and refugees and migration that there should be a time limit of 28 days and the length of time anyone can be held in immigration detention. 
and we do believe that further the presumption should be in favour of community-based re resolutions and against detention. And again, um, the Cabinet Secretary did raise this issue in his letter to the Home Secretary. And the Fabiani. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. As the Minister said, for many, many years now, representatives of this Parliament have been refused any information at all about Dungavel, even though it sits in Scotland. Um, can I ask the Minister if she is aware of any local service involvement, uh, such as NHS Lanarkshire, South Lanarkshire Council, Police Scotland locally, involvement in Dungavel in relation to the state of health and the state of well-being of those held? Minister, I think the member makes a very good point. She illustrates very clearly that we have a situation here in, in um, Scotland which is not in the control or the power of this, uh, this government, and therefore it's a kind of isolated, um, with its own almost rules and regulations, which are not of those of the, the government. Um, as far as NHS services go and health services, what we have been told is that those services are provided, but they're done, they're commissioned by the Home Office, there is no direct link between the Scottish Government and any commission of, commissioning of services <coughs> is simply by the Home Office to the service provider. And I know that, that Linda Fabiani will, will probably be aware of this and it's a situation that is not satisfactory uh, and I know one that, that she's campaigned on for some time. We, again, this is something we can raise again with the Home Office, but it's somewhere we haven't had uh, a great deal of um, encouraging responses so far. Thank you. Question two, Patrick Harvey. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government how it's responding to the serious risk of international disrepute if it continues to miss annual climate change targets. Cabinet Secretary Richard Lockhead. Scotland has set itself stretching annual targets on our pathway to a 42 per cent reduction in emissions by 2020, and we have been open and honest about the challenges we face in achieving the reductions that climate science tells us are necessary. However, we are making progress and our efforts have been widely acknowledged, such as by the UK Committee on Climate Change in its most recent progress report. And the member will be aware that the greenhouse gas emission statistics for 2013 will be published next Tuesday, a week today, and the Minister for Climate Change will deliver a statement to Parliament that afternoon, setting out the Government's response. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. The language which has been used and quoted in the, in the press from the internal audit report uh, on the Scottish Government's climate change programme is deeply worrying, not just the suggestion that the real concern is international repute, which uh, I hope we can all agree should not be our primary focus, but also language which seems to imply an acceptance that the climate change targets are unreachable. Uh, the uh, current programme's inability to achieve targets year by year, uh, elsewhere uh, reference to the currently unachievable annual statutory targets. Does the Cabinet Secretary believe that the annual climate change targets are achievable? Cabinet Secretary. Well, what I can say to the member is that we recognise these targets have to be achieved and we're taking every step possible to achieve them. I think we all accepted that when we put that innovative trailblazing act through this parliament that the early years of the act were going to be particularly challenging in the context of the annual targets, which is quite unique to this parliament in terms of these annual targets. Uh, and therefore, uh, we are, of course, finding the annual targets challenging, but that's against a backdrop where the baseline of data, of course, was, was, re was revised. And, of course, had the targets themselves been revised, or uh, had we measured them against the former baseline at the time of the passing of the Act, we would have achieved the annual targets each and every year uh, that we are supposed to have uh, done so. So we recognise our challenges, but we are making good progress, and it's still the situation um, as it has been, the international commentators think Scotland is leading the way in terms of reducing our emissions and tackling climate change. And as I said to Patrick Harvey, uh, when the statement to Parliament is delivered next week, of course, we'll make available more information about our future plans. Mr Harvey. Uh, thank you. I question how convincing it is to describe legislation as trailblazing if it has not, in fact, blazed a trail. It has not been accompanied with the transformational policy changes that are necessary to achieve the targets, and we're now falling further behind. We're likely to hear next week that we've fallen uh, further behind still. And the Climate Change Act also requires the government to begin to take a focus on the consumption-based emissions. We heard just a couple of months ago that 
taking into account consumption-based emissions, Scotland's carbon footprint is going up, not down. Does the Cabinet Secretary accept that when next week's failure is acknowledged, it's going to have to be accompanied with a transformational policy agenda if we're to have the remotest chance of getting back on track in the foreseeable future? Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> well, it is the case that the long-term trend shows a substantial emissions reduction of just under 27% since 1990. It also is the case that we're leading as far as Western Europe is concerned in terms of the majority of, of countries. Therefore, it is the case that Scotland is trailblazing and we are showing international leadership. But as I accepted and as we frankly are ready to admit, it's also challenging in terms of the early years of the annual targets for the reasons I outlined in my initial response. In terms of policies moving forward, uh, this Parliament and the Scottish Government in particular, of course, are giving a great deal of attention to what policies are required to ensure we can meet uh, our targets. And the new Cabinet Subcommittee on Climate Change, of course, has met a number of times over the last few months to ensure that we are focused on developing the new policies and proposals that are required to meet these very ambitious targets. Lord Campbell. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, Mr Harvey has referred to the question of consumption, but looking at the Climate Change Committee's report, it suggests that consumption in 2012 was 8% below the 2012 target level and only uh, one uh, TWH below the 2020 level. Is the Cabinet Secretary any further comments on the need to reduce consumption? Cabinet Secretary. Well, yes, and uh, in terms of reducing consumption, th that's the, the focus of the policies and proposals we have at the moment. Where they are not delivering, of course, our objective as a government is to bring forward even more ambitious policies and proposals that at least achieve the equivalent of those that are not delivering or exceed them. And that is where we're devoting a lot of energy uh, at the moment. But again, I reiterate, and I think uh, Rod Campbell highlight a couple of the statistics. We are making good progress and we are showing leadership and we're ahead of many uh, other countries in Western Europe and indeed across these islands. Sarah Boyock. Can I ask the um, Cabinet Secretary, um, can he reassure us that he is still committed to these targets? When does he think we are going to meet any of the annual targets? When do you expect to meet any of the annual targets? And when we hear the statement next week about this year's target, um, will you be bringing forward um, new policies or new investment to actually deliver on these targets? They were crossed by all of the Chamber. There's complete cross-party agreement. And as the SNP is now majority government, you have the opportunity with your leadership to bring forward new action. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I can assure Sarah Boyack we do want to demonstrate that, that leadership. And as the audit report referred to by Patrick Harvey highlighted, there are reasons as to why the annual targets so far have not been met due to the revised baseline against which they're measured. And of course, I think most people, most reasonable people understand the challenges in the early years in terms of these uh, annual targets. Uh, as I said before, uh, this time next week, the Minister for Climate Change will be delivering a statement to Parliament uh, in response to the greenhouse gas emission statistics for 2013, which shall, will be made public uh, at that time. And therefore, the Minister will outline the Government's response to these uh, announcements and the policies and proposals that we're, we're considering and already taking forward. Jamie McGregor. Um, thank you. Um, I share the concerns um, that the Scottish Government's credibility with other countries is on the line if it continues to miss annual targets. Um, reducing the waste of heating from homes must continue to be a priority. What more can ministers do to ensure all, all homes in Scotland are properly insulated? Cabinet Secretary. Well, as Jamie McGregor will be aware, and he highlights an important factor in reducing emissions in Scotland, which is waste heat. Uh, we have already taken steps to tackle energy efficiency in this country, and the government has brought forward ambitious proposals uh, these past few years. Uh, however, these conversations amongst ministers continue, uh, and these specific issues of energy efficiency and tackling waste heat are very high on their agenda, because we do agree, uh, as Jamie McGregor highlights, uh, tackling that is not only good for household bills and people's pockets and cutting down the cost of energy uh, usage, but also, of course, will help us reduce our emissions as a country and achieve our targets. Thank you. That ends topical questions. We are now moving on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion number 13338 in the name of